Hi everyone. I'm going to get right into the reading, whatever the cards want to say. So I just wanted to start out with saying that I do channel several different energy groups on here. Only take the reading if it resonates. Never try to force it to fit. If this one doesn't resonate, you might be in one of the other energy groups that I channel, so just check my other readings. Okay. And I appreciate your support. Thank you guys for liking the video. If it resonates, commenting, sharing, subscribing. I do these pretty frequently. All right, so let's get right into it. What's the message for someone out there? What's the current storyline? Four of Wands, Page of Cups, Eight of Swords. What I'm seeing right away is somebody wants... Somebody sees you as their Four of Wands. They see you as the light of their life. They see you as someone who can bring peace and stability and happiness into their life. They feel at home with you. I feel like this person feels like they don't have a lot to offer. For some of you, this could be a secret admirer. For others of you, this might be someone that's just not in a position to offer you a relationship right now. Like they might just have too much on their plate. They're working all the time. They could even be in another connection. Because I see them wanting this with you. I see them fantasizing about having this four of wands here with you. But they feel like they're just a page. Like they feel like... It's like they feel inadequate. They don't feel like they're a knight or a king or a queen. It's like they don't feel like they're at that level. They feel like they're far away from having this with you, even though it is something that they really want. And they're blocked here with the Eight of Swords. That's someone who... It kind of seems like they could actually have that with you because Eight of Swords, it's like you see this person has this blindfold on and they have all these swords around them and they've kind of just given up. They kind of just feel trapped, but if they were to just take off the blindfold, they'd realize there's an opening right here and their castle is right there behind them. Like they're the ones that are blocking themselves. So it's almost like this person's telling themselves they're too busy or they're telling themselves that you're too good for them or... They're telling themselves that if it's like a, a secret or admirer that has a crush on you, it's like they're telling themselves like, oh, you know, I probably wouldn't be their type or maybe I don't make enough money for them or, you know, I, I've seen the kind of people he or she dates and, and they're nothing like me. I don't think they would go for me. But it looks like there actually is potential here. Tell me more about this. The devil. Why the devil? Okay, so in this context, the devil is, is representing lust and passion. This person has a lot of passion for you, a lot of sexual energy towards you. I think they see you as very attractive, very desirable. There's something about you that, that particularly stands out um, about you physically. Like there's something about your hair or tattoos or piercings or your smile it's like I see I because I just feel like they're fixating on one particular physical feature that you have but yeah there's a lot of lust a lot of sexual energy here they feel like you're it's, they fantasize about you all the time whoever this is they feel like you're their wish fulfillment the devil because the devil can be you know uh being tied down, being trapped, subconscious patterns, but it can also be, you know, seduction, lust, um, those like sexual urges. And that's what I'm getting here in this context, especially with the nine of cups showing up right next to it. Tell me more about this three of cups. Yeah, for some, I, I feel like this person... For some, I feel... This isn't for everyone because I am getting a few different storylines for this energy group. But for some, I think this person might be under the impression that you're dating somebody. But you might not actually be. And this person, maybe you have like a friend that likes you that's trying to send out that vibe of, oh, we're together, but you're not even interested in that person. So you need to watch out for that. Because for some, it's like this person might be under this false impression that you're not available to them and you actually are. For others, I feel like they're dating someone and they realize that if they're if they want you, you know, if they're really that crazy about you, they're gonna have to make a choice. Um, I do think there's potential for love here. I mean, I think there is something here, but honestly, I get more lust than anything, at least at this stage. 
Like it's like a very strong physical attraction, sexual attraction. I keep getting the energy of fantasizing. Like they're just constantly fantasizing about you. I think they're trying to navigate this too because they're like, okay, do I... Because with, with the person they're with, I think it's more stable. There might not be a lot of excitement with the person that they're with, but they know that there's the stability there. But with you, it's like you're stirring up this passion and this emotion that they're not used to. But they want to make the right choice. That's why I think they're kind of going into hermit mode and, and thinking about it. Like, what do I what do I do here? I think they're trying to navigate this too, because I just I keep getting this energy of I just keep hearing the words like lust, fantasy, you know, fantasizing, uh, obsession, uh, glamour. Maybe you even do glamour spells on yourself, and it's really working on someone. Um, but yeah, this person is trying to navigate this because they don't want to choose that over something that's stable. And if they've been with their person for a long time, they might even be a little bit bored with that connection. And this isn't a third party reading for everyone. Like I said, that's just one variation of the storyline. For some of you, it is, it is you know, either a third party on your end or theirs. And they, um, they just want to make the right choice. They're trying to figure out this feeling, this, this lust. They're trying to figure out if this is real, if there's something solid there, or is it just, you know, a strong physical attraction to you? They're like, what do I do with this? What, what happens next? For others, I think they're just trying to figure out how to, if it, if there's not a third party situation, I feel like they're just kind of trying to figure out how to get you alone and, um, and get to know you better. It's like, what do they, what do they do next? What do they do from here? That's what they're kind of going into hermit mode to figure out right now. If you're doing, if you're doing glamour spells, they're working, <laughs> they're working. What I'm feeling from this Four of Swords, or sorry, Four of Wands is someone holding on to something really tightly. And it can be someone hold, like trying to, trying to play their cards right. Someone trying to, um, it's like they don't want to show emotion. You see how, how reserved and how you see this person almost seems like they have some anxiety. You see the look on his, I don't know if you can see it clearly, but you see the look on his face. It almost gives off that energy of control issues, anxiety, uh, being reserved. Those are the words that are coming to mind when I look at him, especially in this context. And then this could even be for some of you, this could be the energy group I just channeled where um, I was, what was that reading that I just did recently? It was a secret admirer and I was saying, um, you know, I, I feel like with most people, they can read them like a book, but with you, they can't read you and it kind of freaks them out. Like they don't know what to do with it. Like they don't know what to do with that emotion with it. It's kind of like a new feeling to them, you know? Um, this person could even normally be very logical, but with you, it's like, you're just very charming, very seductive, very beautiful. This person is just, it's like, this person is just under your spell. It's kind of what I'm getting. Like they're, you're honestly, this person is very out of character around you. And for some, like if you're feeling drawn to this video and you're watching, like you've watched up to now and you're like, this resonates, but I don't know why it resonates because I don't know anyone like that. It could potentially be someone that's coming in in the near future. So, you know, if you feel drawn to a video, I, I'd say there's, there's, you know, got to be a reason for it. But anyway, yeah, it's, it's like with this person, I feel like they're very out of character around you. Like they're usually more professional or more logical. You, you bring out another side to them. It's like you really, especially sexually, honestly, I'm getting a strong sexual energy. It's like you have control over them and it kind of freaks them out a little bit. And what I'm getting with this ton of swords in this context is I feel like they, it's like they don't have those walls with you, those barriers. Like they, not that they don't want to, but it's like they don't know how. You see this person, it's like they're trying to, they're trying to, you know, play their cards. Uh, they're, they're, they're trying not play their cards, right? They're trying to, um, what is that saying? Like they're trying to hold their hand close to them or whatever. They're like they're not trying to show their cards. They're, they're trying to be reserved. They're trying to take their time and study you, but it's like they're smitten. You know, it's like they're, they turn into kind of a sappy tool bag around you where it's like they can't, like they've lost their, they don't have any game around you. You know what I mean? 
where it's like around most people, they're reserved and they're in control. But in this situation, you're actually the one in control. Uh, you, you know, you have the upper hand here. Cause it's like this person's trying to control things. They're trying to be reserved. And I just see them. It's like, you just break them down. It's like, maybe you just light up a room too. Maybe you just have that energy, that smile, that charisma that just lights up a room and so it's like they try so hard to play it cool, but when they're around you, it's like you can tell with like their eye contact, with their body language, that you kind of have them under this spell, basically. Um, and Ten of Swords, in this context, I think it's telling me like that, you know, this is ending, this Four of Pentacles, them trying to be reserved. It's like it's just it, it's like hopeless for them. You know what I mean? Like they can't they can't uh, they can't shut you out. They can't play it cool around you let's see what else they want to say about this the hanged man six of cups yeah you're also you're also changing this person in a really good way um i think they're still trying to navigate it i think that you're bringing in like this uh I feel like you're bringing in this new energy. There's something about you that's very youthful. I mean, you could be like in your 50s and 60s, but there's still something about you that's very free-spirited and open and youthful. And this person really admires that energy. And the hanged man... <coughs> sorry. <coughs> With the hanged man, a uh, new perspective you know seeing the bigger picture looking at things differently and then we have the six of cups which is like childhood um it can be childhood trauma in this case i feel like it's more well someone could be healing their childhood trauma for you because they want to be better for you but for the majority of you i feel like this is actually saying it's like you bring out that youthfulness that innocence in them that purity it's like there's something very pure and very light and um just very real very angelic about you and I feel like you bring it out in this person it's like they resonate with that you're you're bringing out that that childlike side in them but in a really positive way it's like you're bringing out this kind of innocence in them and I feel like you came at a really important person uh, you came at a really important time in this person's life or maybe things have been kind of numb, kind of boring, kind of stagnant for a long time. Um, you know, maybe this this could be also be someone who's in a leadership role and they don't really get to have fun. Like they always have to, like they're a boss or a CEO. Um, you know, they, they don't really get to have fun. They always, they're the peop, they're the person that people always come to or they have to be responsible. And there's, they're in some kind of position, whether it's in their personal life, work life, maybe both where they have to be logical, they have to be responsible, they have to be consistently reliable. And I, f I feel like they just don't get a lot of time to, to have fun. They don't get a, they're not usually in a position to be able to just let loose and have fun and be free spirited. But I feel like you really bring that out of them. Like you give them an opportunity to express that and to tune into that free spirited kind of lighthearted, innocent, fun energy. And so I think it's really, um, I think you're really getting in this person's head in a good way because they're thinking about it because your energy is so, it's new. I just feel like you're very different to them. It's, it's like they've had the same type of people, same type of situations for several months, maybe even years now. And then you come along with this youthful, vibrant, happy, fun energy. Um, and they're, they're realizing how much they missed having this kind of energy in their life. And it's making them really think and do some soul searching here, especially with the hermit and the hanged man. Like, you know, when did I let this side of myself go? It's like, they're finding themselves in you. Does that make sense? It, it's like, they're thinking, when did I let this youthful fun side of myself go? Like, where has it been? Why has it been so long since I've had this kind of, you know, passion and kind of energy stirred up inside me? Like, it's, it's almost like they forgot this energy existed. It's almost like their life became so boring and stagnant that they forgot what it meant to have fun. They forgot what it meant to, they forgot. And then you reminded them you, who you are as a person, just your, your vibrant energy just reminded them. I 
I think this person is also kind of realizing that they've been sabotaging themselves. Um, and they're wanting to heal themselves. I feel like this person is a king or queen of swords, but they're not wanting to be that way any anymore. I almost, okay, so remember how I said for some of you, this is a third party situation, not for all of you, but for some. But for those of you that this is a third party situation, I feel like maybe this king of swords is with a queen of swords. Maybe this queen of swords fell in love with this man for the wrong reasons. Um, and don't get caught, caught up on gender. It could be two men or two women. This could be a woman here. Just, you know, take it as it resonates. But but whoever this king of swords is, I feel, remember I was saying it's like if it's a third party situation, I feel like they've been together a while and it's very stable. Um, and with you, they're still trying to figure it out because there's a, there's a very strong lust energy between the two of you. So they're trying to figure out if there's more than that because they don't want to leave something stable and solid for, you know, something that's only going to last a month or two, right? But I almost feel like, so it's like, yes, they're stable with this person they're with if it's a third party, but it's not real stability. It, it's like this King of Swords used to be a King of Cups, he was a king of cups most of his life, and I feel like somewhere along the line, he decided to start being a king of swords. He was probably starting to get, you know, tired of getting rejected, tired of getting hurt. This man, I think, is like, could be like this sweet, nerdy type, like really open-hearted, really just genuine and loving, and he just got hurt and rejected so many times. He got walked all over so many times that he became a king of swords, you know? So like I'm saying, it's like he naturally is a king of cups. But maybe the last few years or so, maybe even longer, he's become a king of swords. And I feel like this other woman that he's had this, you know, supposedly stable relationship with is a queen of swords. And she might naturally be a queen of swords. So, so basically what I'm saying is she loves him for the wrong reasons. He's not really a king of swords. He's a king of cups that's adapted because he's been so heartbroken and rejected his whole life. And he's, you know, forced himself to become a king of swords. It's not natural to him. With the queen of swords that he's with, it is natural to her to be a queen of swords. So she doesn't really know who he is. She doesn't really genuinely love him for who he is. She doesn't know who he is. Because um, like I said, it's like she met him when he had already gone through all this heartbreak and become the king of swords. So she didn't see the sweet, loving, nerdy side of him. She never got to see that. She met him when he was already kind of cutthroat, logical, reserved, and maybe she's very independent and very kind of cutthroat herself. And so she fell in love with that. But e even though it's relatively stable, like they've probably been together a while, they don't really know each other on a deep level. There's a lack of intimacy there. Um, but I think, I think that finding you... And like I said, for some, it's not a third party. For some, it's, it's like maybe he just got rejected, but he is single, but he's still kind of you know, maybe a little bit closed off, a little bit jaded and scared. But with you, it's like you really tear his walls down. And I feel like he's wanting to heal this. Like he's not wanting to be the king of swords anymore. He's wanting to get back in touch with, with his true nature, with his, his king of cups nature. Okay, final messages on this. He wants to let go of the burden. He wants to let go of the illusion. He wants to let go of the facade. He wants to, he doesn't want to have to be fake anymore. I think this man's getting, um, I think you really bring out this gentle, vulnerable side of him. So be very, uh, be very careful with this man. This man is a, he's a really good man. He's very gentle, very vulnerable, very loving deep down, even if he doesn't seem like it. So he is really sensitive. He might present himself as a king of swords. You know, he might present him. He might present himself as someone, um, I don't know why I was going to say king of cords, <laughs> king of swords. He might present himself as someone who's kind of, you know, um, a badass, someone who's, you know, whatever. But but I think he, he, you know, you can see through him. I think that he really is sensitive, but he wants to let go of the illusion. He doesn't want to pretend to be this person anymore. Um he wants to learn. I think that he's really, it's like he's wanting to grow as a person. Yeah, he's wanting to let go of a connection that's just, it's not working for him. So 
I, th- I think, it, especially if it's a third party, it's like he's wanting to move forward with you, but it's almost like he doesn't want to be alone, so he wants to test the waters first and make sure that you guys would have something solid together first. <laughs> Queen of Cups and King of Cups. Look at that. Two of Cups. You guys see that? Queen of Cups, King of Cups, Two of Cups. <laughs> Oh my gosh, I can't even believe this right here. <laughs> wow. It's like he wants this with you, but I feel like he's going about it a sneaky way. So for some... And he's not a bad person. I think that he he might try to be sneaky, but this man, it, it's like he's not good at being sneaky. He's... It, <laughs> In his natural state, like I said, he's a king of cups and he wears his heart on his sleeve, you know? So you guys really connect on a deeper level. Even if you're not outwardly being romantics right now, maybe both of you are kind of jaded and kind of, you know, just being more cautious in relationships. But deep down, you're both the queen and king of cups, a divine match here, soulmates or twin flames. But I feel like one or both of you are being kind of sneaky about about how you go about this because you want to be sure. It's like you see this character too, the Seven of Swords, it's like looking over here. Like, I want to be sure this is a divine match. This isn't just lust because it's going to start out as lust. It could even start out very sexual between the two of you and then lead to something more. Um, it's really interesting here. Yeah, because I just, I feel like this this Southern of Swords, it's like someone, it's one or both of you is going about this in, in like kind of a sneaky way, but I'm not getting a, it's kind of like a, like a little kid and, you know, like when you're like 12, 13 years old and you're in, in school and you're like, oh, I'm like, I'm going to have my friend ask this, this girl or girl out or ask this guy out because I don't, I, or I'm going to have them hint at, you know, my feelings for them. It's like, it's innocent, you know, like it's, it's sneaky, but it's, it's not like a, it, it's not like a manipulative mastermind here. It's, it's like a, a innocent little schoolboy or school girl, school girl here with a crush that's trying to, you know, kind of giggly and, and trying to plan things out and trying to be sneaky about it. You know, it's so it's kind of a sweet, cute energy here, honestly. Um, yeah, if they're in a third party situation, it's like they want to get to know you and kind of be friends and they want to make sure that there's something stable here before they really commit to leaving a third party. Uh, for others, because they just feel more at home with you than they do with the third party. They feel like the third party doesn't know them. The third party never knew them. They never understood them. For others, this could just be a secret admirer where there is no third party, but it's like they don't know. They don't, for one thing, they don't know for sure if it's lust or if this is actually potential love here. They don't know because they're very physically attracted to you. I'm surprised the Queen of Wands didn't come out. Like they are very, very attracted to you. Um, I'm hearing like your smile, your hair, there's something about you that's just very, it's like they just think about it, as, you know, like I was saying earlier in the video, there's like, a, you know, a particular characteristics that they just fixate on. But it's, it's like, if it's a secret admirer, it's like they want to be sneaky because they want to really get to know you and make sure this isn't just in their head. So anyway, I'm going to put this out there. I hope this resonates with you guys. And I really appreciate your support. If this resonated with you, please like the video, um, share. Maybe you have someone on social media that needs to hear this message too. And please subscribe if you're not already subscribed. I do these frequently. I will continue, most likely be continuing on with this energy group as long as it comes up again in the cards. Um, and I appreciate your comments too. I love hearing your stories. So thank you guys for watching.